I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU. These are our walkthrough videos for our revamp supply and demand unit plan. We've reached day six, consumer and producer surplus. Very important topics that I have sort of been thinking are more and more important as time goes on, at least seems to be a lack of understanding of them out there. The way I always introduce consumer surplus is with an auction. So I bring some items and you just auction them off. Usually I bring our nice MRU stickers and I auction the stickers off, you know, going once, going twice, you know, the whole thing, right? Except instead of collecting money, I just give the student the sticker and then I ask, okay, how much better off are you now that I've given you the sticker? Because they've essentially revealed their willingness to pay. You know, that was the most they would pay for the sticker. And... I've made them that much better off. So I've said, look, look, I basically, when, if they say I, they would buy the sticker for a dollar and I give them a sticker, I'm saying it's it's like I'm giving you a dollar. It's You've just said you valued it at a dollar. I'm giving you a sticker. It's like I made you better uh, a dollar better off and their consumer surplus there is a dollar. How much they would have paid, in this case, a dollar versus the price, which is zero. All right. And so you ask, you know, you auction off a few items and ask the students to calculate the consumer surplus for each of the auction winners. So this is so key to stress with consumer surplus. It's never negative. If you are voluntarily buying something, this is why it's so clear that the, so, so important that you emphasize the whole market runs on voluntary transactions. People are voluntarily saying, hey, I want to buy this thing, usually. And so if they're doing that, they're saying like, I... The price I'm paying for it, I value, it's worth more to me than the price I'm paying for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't buy it. You're exchanging dollars for the goods. So you're saying this good is more valuable than those dollars. And, you know, the illustration I always use is sometimes you don't know what the price is. You know, sometimes you're at a sporting event or something, you go to buy some water and it's like $8 and you're like, nope. You're basically saying my willingness to pay is below $8. But had they said, say, $2 or a dollar, maybe you would have bought it. And so your willingness to pay is above that. And so this is very important because we never think about consumer surplus. We buy things, we get mad because we say, oh, you know, it only cost them like a, you know, 50 cents to make this and they're charging me five bucks or whatever. But when you're buying it, you're saying, hey, I value it at actually more than five bucks. So you are getting some consumer surplus every time you buy something. Ask the students to write down the last three things they bought and try to calculate their consumer surplus for each of these. What is the most they would have paid for them, it? And then what did they pay for it? And that is their consumer surplus. All right, at the individual level, that's consumer surplus. On each item, what would you have paid for it? What's the most you would have paid for it? Minus what you do pay for it. When we go up to the market, we gotta think about the demand curve. The demand curve ultimately represents all the buyers and it's the relationship between price and quantity sold. And where it comes from is that, you know, each point on that demand curve, there's somebody that, that that point represents somebody's willingness to pay. So we're all sort of on this demand curve together and, you know, at our willingness to pay. And we have a video sort of going through how do you think about consumer surplus, both at the individual level and at the market level. And it shows how to calculate it. If you're required to do that, if you're required to talk about, all right, how do you calculate um consumer surplus. Then we have some, you know, uh, questions to check understanding as the video goes on. It's a very short video. And then we move to producer surplus. And so you can ask your students before we get to it, what do you think the producer surplus is going to be? We just had this concept consumer surplus that represents how much better off are consumers from buying something? How much better off do you think producers are? Now, what they should get at is profit, probably. I mean, it's probably what it is. And that's roughly what it is, technically variable profit. But it's the price minus their cost. Basically, what is the lowest they would have sold it for, which is their cost. Um, and then what they get for it, the price. And so the difference there is their producer surplus. And again, we have a video that describes producer surplus, pausing at points to ask questions. And then lastly, we have some true and false questions that we put here because I think these are all important concepts that again, when you're thinking like an economist, they're an intuitive, but nobody thinks like an economist. So it's, it's, it's either hard to think about. Every time there's a voluntary transaction between a buyer and seller, they most they both must be better off. Otherwise they would not have done it. It's a voluntary transaction. They don't need to do it. So they every voluntary transaction has to generate both consumer and producer surplus. Otherwise it's not voluntary. I mean, they must be better off 
how much better off they are is captured with consumer and producer surplus. So another one, the scenario in, in, in question two here, you know, you're haggling over something and the producer won't budge and you're getting really mad. You know, maybe you walk away just because you're mad and you let your anger, you know, overrun you. But if you value it at more than the price, you should still buy it. As long as your value is higher than the price, you should still buy it. On the producer side, something similar. As long as, you know, what the, what is being offered is higher than your cost, you should take it. And it if what's being offered is less than your cost, you shouldn't uh, produce. And that's what question three is getting at. Producer surplus is always larger than consumer surplus. Again, we always think of the big corporations and all the money they make. So yeah, it may be the case that producer surplus is larger than the consumer surplus, but not always. I mean, the consumer surplus can potentially be very large. If you get something you consider very, very valuable at a very low price, your consumer surplus might be higher than um, the producer's. Okay, here's all the answers. Here's some more practice with the market level. Okay, what is at the market level, what does consumer surplus look like? It's this triangle from the willingness to pay down to the price. At the market level, what is producer surplus? It's the supply curve, which represents cost up to what they sell for, the price. Exit ticket, hey, dinner tonight. Make yourself happy. Think about your consumer surplus as you sit down to this, del to this delicious bowl of mac and cheese or whatever you may eat for dinner. Get our supply, demand, and equilibrium unit plan here, or click for the next video.